what does this airplane, this airplane, and this airplane all have in common? You're not going to believe it, but we're going to tell you on Celebrating Aviation with Mike Mashad. This is by request. Special thanks to my dear friend Glenn Weaver for the idea for this episode. What these three diverse airplanes have in common is that they've all been in continuous production for more than 50 years since their first flights. We're going to be talking about aircraft production in the United States and around the world, and some of these statistics are going to blow you away. I'd like to start with five smaller companies that are uh, back on the East Coast and one out here in California. Uh, they built specialized aircraft, and I'm going to start with this uh, to kind of put things in perspective for you. Let's begin with the Martin Company in Baltimore, Maryland, uh, McDonnell in St. Louis, Missouri, Grumman in Bethpage, New York, and Northrop in Hawthorne, California. The fifth company is this. Look at this factory. This is in Farmingdale, New York. It's Republic Aviation. And I use these as examples of smaller companies that build specialized aircraft. In the case of Republic, it was uh, fighters for the United States Air Force, starting uh, from the P-47 Thunderbolt and into the Cold War era with the F-105 Thunder Chief. And the early uh, production for the A-10 Thunderbolt II uh, was in this factory as well, all in the same final assembly building. Compare that to the aerospace giants on the West Coast, like Lockheed, North American, Convair, Boeing, and Douglas. And I'll use Douglas as an example. They built airliners originally at their Santa Monica facility, uh, aircraft for the Navy in El Segundo, uh, Air Force transports in Long Beach, missiles in Huntington Beach, and in the 1960s, all of that was consolidated at this uh, huge facility on Long Beach Airport. Uh, this photo was taken in 1972 at the beginning of production for the DC-10 airliner. But Long Beach was home to the DC-8s and DC-9s, uh, DC-10s, MD-11s. And uh, production there ended in 2015 with the C-17 Globemaster III. And at that point... Uh, the companies of Douglas, McDonnell Douglas, and Boeing Long Beach had built more than 50,000 airplanes. Uh, when the C-17 went out of production, that left only the Robinson uh, helicopters uh, built in Torrance as the last manned aircraft uh, being built in the entire state of California. That changed this year with the uh, new Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider. Let's take a look at the numbers in uh, World War II. This is just staggering. Uh, in the U.S., we were building fighters, bombers, trainers, transports. And this is my photo of the week. It's the uh, Douglas Long Beach plant. This is the 2000th Boeing B-17 built under license at Long Beach. And uh, look at the demographic of the crowd there in that photo. You see the vast majority are women. And uh, I would guesstimate that probably between 70 and 80 percent of the uh, U.S. workforce in uh, aviation during the war uh, was made up of women. And these were they were named Rosie the Riveter. Total number of U.S. aircraft built from 1940 to 1945, a staggering 300,000. But look at this, U.S. engines and propellers, 800,000. Uh, I'll break it down for you, 15,000 plus P-51 Mustangs and P-47 Thunderbolt fighters. Uh, but let's look at the bombers, and I'm going to show you an interesting trend here. Uh, we're going to start with the consolidated B-24, more than 18,000, uh, nearly 13,000 B-17s from Boeing and other uh, companies, just under 4,000 B-29s, just over 2,000 B-47s. Look at these numbers coming down. We're into the Cold War now with the B-52 at 744, 116 Convair B-58 Hustlers, 104 uh, Rockwell B-1 Bombers, the Lancer, and 20 Northrop B-2 Spirit Stealth Bombers. I took this photo of an F-16, by the way. It was an interesting chase mission. Uh, two days before this uh, video was produced, uh, the Northrop Grumman B-21 Raider made its first flight. I took this photo from a, a news uh, wire service. 
Uh, the estimate right now is an initial order of 100. That could change over the years. But uh, here's the the new kid, uh, the best, biggest and best and brightest uh, in aerospace, the B-21. Uh, by comparison, let's look at airliner production. And again, a lot of surprises here. Let's uh, dive into it. These are the first two Boeing airliners, the 80 series and the 247. World's first uh, pressurized uh, airliner, the 307. The 314 Flying Boat, 377 Strato Cruiser. This photo was taken at what is now LAX. Quite a difference from what the airport looks like today. And of course, the revolutionary uh, 367-80 first flew in 1954. It was called the Prototype Jet Transport. Now, this will surprise you. The number of Boeing airliners built before the 707, 169. That's it. But look at this, the number of Boeing airliners built since the first 707, 21,500 airplanes. By comparison, the total number of Douglas and McDonnell Douglas airliners, 5,700. Let's look at this airplane, the 737, the workhorse. Four generations, the original, first flew in 1967, uh, the classic, the next gen, and the max flying today. A total of 11,600 Boeing 737s. I should mention I'm using factory information here. Uh, I know these numbers change with orders and options, but uh, I'm going to go with this 11,600 since 1967. Compare that to the Airbus A320. Nearly the same number, 11,200, but since 1987, that's 20 years less production. The A320 family, and that's the A319, 320, and the uh, strength uh, stretched uh, 321, are built in four different factories around the world, France, Germany, China, and the United States. But uh, the production rates are just amazing. Uh, I remember seeing this number in 2015. I couldn't believe it. 40 aircraft a month. By 2019, 60 aircraft a month. And look at this. For next year, a projected 75 aircraft a month. Now, why do I sound so surprised? Well, this was a banner that came out of the presentations department in Long Beach, California, McDonnell Douglas. I did the artwork for this. And this was a big deal. This is the uh, upping of the production rate on the Super 80 from 6.2 to 6.6 airplanes per month. Now, let's compare the competitors. There were more than 1,000 707s built, a little more than half that number for the DC-8. But look at this, 65 Convair 880s and 37 990s. Why is that? These airplanes, aside from just being the most aesthetically beautiful jet airliners to me, um, were considered kind of the Ferrari of the jet airliners. They uh, uh, were fast. Uh, The 990 uh, with its speed pods was the fastest uh, subsonic jetliner before uh, the Concorde came into uh, service. But uh, they they were a little smaller in passenger capacity. And the biggest factor to me was the uh, General Electric engines. Uh, They were powered by the civilian version of the J-79. And uh, this didn't integrate well into the airline fleets that had mostly Pratt & Whitney powered airplanes. There were some other problems as well. But these two airplanes spelled the end of Convair's brilliant uh, airliner uh, career. Let's look at the legends. Now, if you're into aviation history, I'm sure you've heard this uh, phrase, more than 10,000 DC-3s were built. Well, it's actually 989 passenger DC-3s and Douglas sleeper transports. And they can be uh, identified by the passenger door there. If you look after the wing, you notice that there are hinges on the bottom. It folds down to an air stair. And this was the passenger DC-3. By comparison, what was built in huge numbers, 9,000 plus C-47 sky trains and a number of variants. And they were distinguished with a cargo door a clamshell design that you see here. So why do I mention that? Well, after the war, surplus DC-3s were sold to startup airlines and cargo airlines, and uh, they were actually C-47s from the Army Air Forces. And those cargo doors were modified into, as you see here, a fold-down passenger door. But these were C-47s that became DC-3-type aircraft. 
In Europe, we had uh, the world's first turboprop airliner, the Viscount, 445. Uh, the world's first jet airliner, the Comet series, 114. But uh, as far as turbojet-powered transports, it was the Sud Caravelle from France that was the most produced airliner in Europe, 282. Were there airplanes where there was only one built? Yes. Let's start with this, the Douglas XB-19, world's biggest airplane in 1939, seen here at Santa Monica. It was called the Hemisphere Bomber. There were high hopes for this, but to be frank, it was too big, too much airplane, too soon. Uh, the technology for airplanes of this size hadn't uh, matured yet, and this was uh, replaced by the uh, B-17 and B-24, which became operational. The X-3 Stiletto, uh, kind of an underwhelming uh, airplane uh, through no fault of its own. It uh, was uh, fitted with engines that were far less powerful than what it was designed for, uh, or the engines that it was originally designed for, which never came into production. But the airplane made 59 flights total and uh, uncovered a number of uh, interesting flight test realms, which were quite valuable. Uh, but it was only there was only one built. It's on display at the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. There was only one Lockheed Salmon and one Convair Pogo. These were experimental uh, vertical takeoff and landing turboprops, never went into production. Uh, the French Coleopter, jet uh, VTOL aircraft. And then there's this machine. This is always one of my personal favorites, the Ferry Rotodyne. It was a turboprop powered uh, jet tip main rotor uh, vehicle that was supposed to replace helicopters on city to city uh, routes. Uh, they were even ordered by New York Airways uh, to go from New York to Philly uh, and up to Boston. Uh, that order never came to be. You know, I actually have a better picture of the ferry Rotodyne. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. This is courtesy of the great uh, Jack Lenwood, who produced more than 600 uh, covers for Ravel and Aurora. And a great model if you can find it on the market. But, uh, but this was the Rotodyne. And again, only one. There were two Ryan X-13 Vertijets, two Ferry Delta IIs, first airplane to fly 1,000 miles per hour, two Bell X-2s, three Douglas Skyrockets and North American X-15s, as well as three uh, TSR-2s and the saunders Row uh, SRA-1, which was the world's first jet-powered flying boat. There were five of the Converse Sea Darts, and what was the longest production run for an airplane? Uh, it started with this, the A-4 Skyhawk. Uh, first flew in 1954 uh, and uh, was in continuous production until February of 1979. I attended the rollout of the last airplane, which looked like this. It was an A-4M built for the Marine Corps. We were hoping to get to 3,000, but it was 2,960 airplanes built. Real workhorse for the Navy. And uh, 25 years. But... That record was broken by this airplane, also flew in 1954, the Lockheed C-130 Hercules, seen taking off out of Palmdale. Now, this is a surprise. The C-130 was a Skunk Works project. By far, the most popular C-130 built is this one, Fat Albert, uh, used by the Blue Angels. And this is the original airplane. Uh, the new one is the J model, flown today, but puts on a great air show, and the kids love it and a very popular airplane. Uh, C-130 used by numerous countries around the world, so many different variants. Uh, here we see the uh, Spectre gunship, but there were uh, special ops airplanes, uh, communications airplanes, rescue, you name it, the C-130 did it. And this is the current model. This is a Stretch J, and uh, the record for longest continuous production of a military airplane, 69 years. However, the ultimate record is this machine, the great Beechcraft Bonanza. Most popular model, the V-35B with the butterfly tail, the V-tail airplane. And today, uh, the G-36 is rolling off the line. And this is a six-passenger, uh, fully glass cockpit equipped, three-blade prop, uh, super, super airplane. Record, 76 years continuous production. Okay, what was the largest production run? Well, some surprises here too. Let's start with this. The F-86, 9,600 plus, uh, the most produced jet fighter in the U.S. 
But look at this from the Soviet Union, 17,300 plus MiG-15s. And again, 11,500 uh, rounding up uh, Soviet MiG-21s versus uh, fi about 5,200 uh, McDonald F-4 Phantoms. Uh, 34,250 uh, ME-109s or BF-109s and 36,200 uh, just about IL-2 Stormovics. That's a lot of airplane. Uh, 39,000 Nike missiles. This was a surface-to-air uh, missile system uh, used throughout the United States during the Cold War. Here's the magic number, folks. 45,000 airplanes continuously produced. Are you ready? Cessna 172, the workhorse. Runners-up would be 40,600 Piper Cherokees, 40,000 Piper Cubs, and that's all models. 32,000 Cessna 150s. And I'm going to close with a comparison. As you know, on this channel, we're big on progress and uh, how the history of aviation evolved, how the machines evolved over time. But I'd like to compare the first model of the 707, the 120 series, with the current 737 MAX, and that's the uh, 9 model, because that's about the same size as the first 707. So let's look at these numbers. And before I get into it, let me just say, I've had comments in the past. I'm using factory information, airline information. A lot of these change. If you have flown these airplanes or familiar with them, uh, your numbers may be different. Feel free to leave comments uh, below. But uh, I'm I'm running with uh, factory info for you here. Uh, first introduced in 1958. I remember seeing this as a kid. It was like looking at a spaceship. I couldn't believe it. It was a uh, uh, different sound. Uh, the smell of of uh, JP four. It was just a. It, you were looking at the future of aviation. It was an amazing experience in 1958. Airplane carried up to 140 passengers, uh, flew 3,000 miles, and cruised at 35,000 feet. But here's the kicker: it had four turbojet engines that produced a total of 54,000 pounds of thrust. Okay, compare that to this 737-9 Max introduced 2018 up to 200 passengers, nearly 4,000 miles of range, uh, cruises at 41,000 feet, but has two engines, turbofans, that produced more thrust than all four engines of the original 707. Think about that. But here's the punchline. The 737 MAX uh, uses less fuel, makes less noise, and produces fewer emissions than the first 707 and all the early first generation jetliners. And that's what it's all about, the evolution of the airplane. So there you have it, a look at uh, production numbers and production runs around the world. I'd like to say a special thanks to the great folks who have made this episode possible. And thank you, the viewers, for celebrating aviation with Mike Machat. Uh, hope you've enjoyed this episode. We'd love to have you on board. If you're not already a subscriber, and please do hit the like button on the way out. That does help us in a big way with YouTube. As always, until next time, take care.